Today, we're going to discuss what you need to know about upgrading your electrical system when converting your property to two units, three units, or even four units and a garden suite. Not planning the electrical system upgrade properly ahead of time can cost you in terms of time, money, and even safety. So let's dive right in. Hey, this is Andy from Sweet Editions. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, our goal is to help homeowners and investors create more housing and generate wealth. It would help us out if you can give us a like and subscribe to this channel. Also, we have a comprehensive in-person training program coming up. More details at sweeteditions.com slash training. Okay, unless you're a geek like me, you'll probably think that this topic is quite boring. As super boring as it is, it's also super important for any homeowner or investor who are implementing the Max Street strategy and converting a single family home to multiple units to be fully aware of what's involved with the electrical system. There are three primary reasons to take the electrical system and any necessary upgrade seriously. First and foremost, we need to ensure the electrical system is safe for all units and all occupants using the space. Secondly, we need to have sufficient capacity for current and future needs, and this aspect definitely needs to be considered early on. And finally, we want to take advantage of the possibility of separating out utilities and having individual meters so that occupants for each unit are responsible for their own energy consumption. So with those compelling reasons identified, let's get into the nitty gritty. In order to understand the electrical system for a house, we need to separate it into three separate parts. The first part is the portion that exists from the utility company's transformer to your electrical meter. The second part is the portion from the electrical meter to the main service panel, or in our case, several electrical meters to several service panels because of multiple units. And lastly, the branch circuits serving all the lights, switches, outlets, and other devices throughout the unit. Let's first discuss the portion from the utility to the meters. So this has to do with load requirements for the unit. In older neighborhoods, the service can come in overhead, which is an easier upgrade. Post-1950, we started having more lateral services, which were underground. Whether you convert to two, three, or four units, you need a licensed electrician to add up the loads for every unit once the plans are completed for the project. They'll determine what the total load is. Most single family homes have a 100 amp service, and in most cases, increasing up to four units would require at least a 200 amp service. Depending on the types of systems used, four or five units may even require a 400 amp service. There's no 300 amp service from the utility. It's typically 100, 200, or 400. Again, the actual total load can vary depending on what types of systems are used. So for example, if let's say you use gas heating for all your units, plus your garden suite, and you may even have gas stoves or clothes dryers, you may be able to go on the lower end of the capacity. However, if you have electric heating and all sorts of electrical appliances, you'll likely need to go on the higher end. Again, your electrician will need to run the calculations to determine what is needed. Sometimes there are challenges with the utility in that they're not able to upgrade the main service line to 200 amps or 400 amps, and they may ask the homeowner to bear this expense. This can be costly if needed to be done and it can run into the five figures. So it may be wise to find out early on what the max capacity is for your particular property where you wanna do a major conversion. When our clients encounter this issue after the fact, they sometimes resort to changing out the heating systems and certain appliances to reduce the total load requirements. Now let's discuss the meters to the main service panels. Now, if you have one meter, you would typically have one main electrical panel servicing the entire property, and you may have individual sub panels or auxiliary panels. However, more and more homeowners are opting to go with multiple meters so that every occupant pays for their own usage. And of course, if you have multiple electrical meters, you will then have multiple panels corresponding to each individual unit's meter as well. Now, although you will typically have all of your electrical meters for all of your units in one location on the exterior of the building, it doesn't mean that you should have them in the same location of the main electrical panels inside the house. It would be ideal to have the panels located physically within each of the units. So this makes the most sense because if a breaker trips in one of the units because of a minor circuit break, then the occupant of that particular unit does not need to go into the, another unit to reset the breaker. So this is another aspect of privacy that's ideal. So for the existing main house, you just need to run a conduit from each meter to the location of each unit buried inside the floor and wall cavities. For a detached garden suite in the backyard, it may be necessary to dig a trench to bring in the conduit from the meter at the front of the property all the way to the garden suite where the service panel will be located. 
So now let's discuss the final component of the electrical system, which are the branch circuit wiring that connects the service panel of each unit. This part can get a little bit tricky within the existing house where you're converting one unit to multiple units. You have to ensure that any old wiring is disabled or removed and have to install new branch circuit wiring in the correct panel and throughout the unit. The branch circuits are used, of course, to service all the light switches, outlets, and devices throughout the individual units. Any new wiring must be done in accordance to the current electrical code. For example, if you're removing ungrounded wiring or aluminum wiring, you'll need to now install new grounded wiring. Devices will need to be arc fault or ground fault protected with tamper resistant outlets. Now, of course, if you have older knob and tube wiring because your house was built pre-1950, that will need to be replaced regardless. For the branch circuit wiring in a garden suite, it's very straightforward. It's the same for any house, but just smaller in scope. Okay, so this covers the three main sections for an electrical service upgrade. To recap, pay attention to number one, the connection between the utility to the meters. Number two, the connection between the meters to the main service panels. And finally, number three, the branch circuit wiring connecting the panels to all the individual devices. A few very important things to keep in mind. Have your electrician perform the load calculations early on to determine what your needs are. When starting your conversion project, contact your utility company as early as possible because service size upgrades and new meters can take some time to schedule. And only licensed electricians can perform the work. In Ontario, they either need to have a valid ESA number or ECRA number. Okay, so this covers the electrical system upgrades at a high level when you're doing a multi-unit max reconversion. We'll also be covering the entire construction process in our upcoming training program. If you're interested, more information can be found at sweeteditions.com slash training or in the link in the description below. So have you done a major electrical system upgrade before? Did I miss anything important? It'd be great if you can share it below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. To learn more about the Max Sweet strategy, download our free guides at sweeteditions.com and get started. And if you enjoyed this video, here's another great one for you.